Hey everyone, it's Jacob here with another daily vlog. First thing you'll immediately notice, shaved and haircut. So a lot of people were very concerned that the beard was getting out of control and that the hair was getting a little too long. And uh, I think some of you were genuinely worried and concerned about me, including my family and my friends. So I went, I shaved off the beard, I got the haircut. Now I look like a normal presentable person again. So you're welcome. Today, I wanted to talk about something that, uh, I've been seeing a lot of people talk about this online, but there's not a lot of explanation or definition for what this is. And it's about self-awareness. And self-awareness is, of course, a very important skill for us to possess. In fact, from the CEOs that I interviewed for my new book, emotional intelligence, specifically empathy and self-awareness, were the two most uh, crucial things for EQ that leaders identified that future leaders need to have. But what exactly is self-awareness? I think this is where a lot of people get confused. And I learned the most about this. Uh, Dr. Tasha Yurik, she's somebody who I had on my podcast. She's somebody that I interviewed for my book as well. And I like her uh, explanation of self-awareness and how she thinks about it the best. And she says that there are two types of self-awareness. There's the internal piece and there's the external piece. The internal piece is how you view yourself, your strengths, your weaknesses, what excites you and motivates you, what zaps your energy. Basically, do you know yourself? And I think a lot of people, well, I mean, a lot of people struggle with that, but a lot of people are more comfortable in terms of understanding what that means, okay? Because, I mean, you understand what I mean when I'm saying your strengths, your weaknesses, what zaps your energy, etc. But the other part of self-awareness that a lot of people forget to, to focus on is how other people see you. So there's the internal self-awareness and the external self-awareness. So how do other people see you? In other words, if you identify, for example, that some of your strengths are communication, collaboration, project management, team building, do other people view those as your strengths as well? Because that is also a very, very important aspect of self-awareness. And I'll give you an example. I did a, a workshop for a bunch of executives, I think it was last year or the year before, I think it was 150 or 200 executives at a very, very known brand that I won't mention. And I had all the executives do this exercise where I gave them a series of questions. You know, your strengths, your weaknesses, what zaps your energy, you know, those types of things. And I had them write all these things down. And then I had them pair up with one of their colleagues uh, at, that, at that organization, another executive. And I had them answer these so, same questions about the other person. And, and then we compared if their responses about themselves matched up with the responses that somebody gave about them. And as they were doing this exercise, you could just hear people cracking up and laughing and, and giggling because it turns out that in this particular organization, at least, how a lot of people viewed their strengths and their weaknesses was not how other people viewed their strengths and their weaknesses. So uh, that's the crucial piece that a lot of people miss. Self-awareness is not just about how you view yourself, it's about how other people view you as well. So something to keep in mind when it comes to self-awareness. And you can start practicing this by simply asking these questions about yourself and having other people ask these questions about you and start sharing some of these things. Part of practicing self-awareness is also being a little bit, of, a little bit uh, vulnerable, a little bit humble, uh, opening up a little bit so that people can know who you are know what uh, motivates you, know what zaps your energy, know what you're scared of, for example. But if you're constantly trying to act like this stoic person without any emotion at work, then your internal self-awareness is not gonna match at all with how other people see you. And as we know in the business world, perception is reality. I don't care how great you are or how great you think you are at something like team building or how great you think you are at something like public speaking or writing or selling. It doesn't matter how good you think you are at those things. If those around you say that you're not good at those things, then guess what? You're not that good at those things. So don't just focus on yourself, but also try to understand how other people view you as well. Uh, there's a simple exercise that Ben Franklin used to do. Uh, this is more for the internal piece and I love this exercise. He used to do a tally of assets and liabilities. Ignore that annoying, annoying dog in the background. Somewhere, neighbor's dog. Uh, but he did this exercise of assets and liabilities. And, and what he would do is he would take a, a, a P&L of his, of his character, of his net worth. 
his self-worth, I should say. And what he did is he would write down all of his assets. His assets are his strengths. And he would then write down all of his liabilities, which were his weaknesses. And he would do this on an ongoing basis to get sort of a net worth of his character. And so if you do this, the idea is that over time, you should see your assets start to increase and your liabilities start to decrease because you're working on your liabilities, turning them into assets, and you're trying to grow your assets. It's kind of a fun exercise that I read that Ben Franklin used to do, something fun that you can do as well. But try to take tally of these things on an ongoing basis. Uh, not necessarily every month. You could do it every quarter if you want. Man! Wish I had something to distract that dog. Uh, but you can do this on a, on a quarterly basis if you want and have other people do this as well. Have open conversations about these things. You can make it fun and engaging, be a little bit more vulnerable and a little bit more human. And you're gonna find that you're gonna become a much more self-aware person, both internally and externally. I'd love to hear from you. Are you practicing self-awareness? Do you have any stories of uh, leaders in your company who are maybe not self-aware? I always love stories and examples, so share something in the comment below, and I hope you're having a wonderful morning, day, or night, wherever in the world you are. And I hope that you like the shaved face and the haircut, and that I don't scare you anymore. I'll see you very soon. Bye-bye.